to Toyota Time with Timmy the Toolman and Sean and of course Chris. We're here back in his garage for part two of the Marlin Crawler transfer case install. In part one you saw us disassemble the original transfer case, put on these adapter plates and get everything all buttoned up. And now in this video, part two, we're going to show you how to install it. Also in this part two, we're going to be showing you our custom drive shafts that we got from Tom Woods and showing you how to install those with the flanges they provided. And also show you how to adjust your pinion angle with Opt Off-Road's adjustable rear, lower, and upper control arms. What we're installing this in is a 2000 automatic with a push button four wheel drive transfer case. And what that means is, is when we install this, it's going to add about eight to nine inches and start to make contact with some things in the rear. First thing it's going to make contact with is the cross member. So we have to cut that out. And because of our push button four wheel drive transfer case, we actually have an actuator that sticks out a little bit further as well. And that's going to be making contact with the gas tank. So now we have some decisions to make. Luckily, we made those decisions well in advance, and we already planned to do an F-150 tank relocation kit from Einke. And we're also prepared to cut the cross member out and install an aftermarket one from a company called TMR Customs. Chris found this online, and he likes it because it's removable, like the stock cross member, and also it has mounting points so he can continue his skid plates underneath his vehicle. Now, for those of you that have a manual transmission with a J-shift transfer case you might not need to cut anything it might clear the cross member and of course if it clears the cross member it's not going to make contact with the gas tank so if you have that set up you might be okay if you have an automatic setup with a j-shift transfer case you're still going to need to cut the cross member but you're not going to make contact with the gas tank so that will be nice for those now for us we have the longest possible situation going on and so we're going to have to start to move things around this is a pretty serious mod and you got to be pretty committed to move some of these things and make some customizations on your rig. So speaking about customization, because we're moving the mounting points for the flanges on the drive shafts, we're also going to need some custom drive shafts, both front and rear. The rear is going to get shortened and the front drive shaft is going to be longer because the original transfer case is going to be moved back slightly. The setup is going to be the transmission. Then this Marlin Crawler taco box, and then the original transfer case, and that's where the drive shafts are going to attach to. In addition to the custom drive shafts, you're also going to need a mount for this transfer case so that you distribute the weight to the closest cross member. Because when you're lengthening this whole setup on the drivetrain underneath, you're having this setup a little bit longer, and the weight is not going to be distributed correctly on the transmission mount. So things could get stressed a little bit. We're going to install this onto the transfer case. And then we're going to make a little a custom mount, a little shootout that's going to be able to support this new mount that actually mounts to the transfer case here. A lot of these parts that we had to source can be bought from Marlin Crawler's website, but we chose to go another route and try to find these parts a little bit less expensive. And so we're going to link everything in the video description to help you guys in being successful and maybe saving a little bit of change. But if you just want a one-stop shop, Marlin Crawler's website is going to have a lot of that for you. So as we go through this install in part two, we're going to mention all the little things that maybe we didn't mention in this intro statement and let you know what is going to be necessary to make this a successful install. But without further ado, let's jump out of the rig. We're going to cut out that cross member and go from there. First, we're going to try to pull this brake line off the frame a little bit so we have some room to cut this bracket out. We're just going to unscrew this little, looks like a 12 millimeter, and pull it out of this clip and maybe the next clip and should give us enough room to cut the cross member. So we're doing some Traeger stuff, cooking some tri-tip. And look what we got here, another third gen. Nice thing about this third gen is it's a four wheel drive manual. This is just some random four runner just out here on the street. So we're gonna jump under here and show you that you won't need to cut anything. You got plenty of room. You only need eight and a half inches. 
That's what she said. What do we got, like 10 inches? So, wow. So here's the cross member. We got plenty of room. So this would definitely clear on a manual four wheel drive model. Pretty cool to have one out here and kind of showcase it. So we got done cutting and grinding and making this all smooth. And as you can see here, Chris cleaned it up and then put some paint on it to protect it. So in order to mate the Marlin Crawler dual case to the back of the transmission, we have to take the rear bell housing off of the transmission. So we're gonna loosen some bolts on the transmission mount down here that attaches to the cross member and remove the four bolts inside there so we can remove the bell housing. And then we need to remove the four bolts inside the bell housing and these bottom three. So with all seven bolts removed from the bell housing and also the bolts removed from the mount down here, we should be able to remove this bell housing so we can mate it up with the Marlin Crawler transfer case. Might have to jack it up a little actually. There we go. All right, so we're just gonna try to yank this off of here. Might need a mallet for persuasion. Chris was able to wiggle it off and break the seal from the ceiling on the back here. All right, so now we gotta get this bearing out and this seal and replace it with the one that came in the Marlin Crawler kit. We're gonna remove this C-clip so that we can remove the bearing. And we have a Lyle seal puller that we try to use on the opposite side to pull the seal, but there really wasn't enough leverage, so we're hoping we can just push it out after we get this bearing out. Little dust cap cover thing. We might have to see if we can find a socket that'll fit inside this. So we got this 32 millimeter socket that fits pretty nicely on the inner race there of the bearing and through the seal. We're gonna give it a couple wax and see if it pops out. Came out pretty easy actually, huh? Not too bad. So let's take a look at this seal then. Got this one and five eighths. Ooh, that's a perfect fit. One and five eighths in socket. All right, so we got everything we need removed from this rear bell housing on the transmission. Now we're gonna install the Marlin Crawler stuff. So we cleaned up the surface here and also inside so we can start to install these parts. We got some acetone, we're gonna clean it up, make sure it's a nice suitable surface for some FIPG. Not Toyota FIPG, but this ultra gray Permatex that's included with the Marlin Crawler kit. So we have these parts that we're gonna install in place of the stock parts. This is gonna replace the bearing that we removed, the little dust cap, the C-clip, and of course the seal. This is a Marlin Crawler specific seal. So they made this specific for their components here that we're gonna install right now. So first we're just gonna put a little lube on here and tap this in. nice and seated. Now you notice there's a larger side and a smaller side. This smaller side is what goes into the rear bell housing of the transmission and we're gonna just put some FIPG on there to seal that up nice. All right so I'm gonna put some ultra gray just on the outer lip right here. Probably gonna have to wipe some off after, but that's okay.
Might have to tap it in a little bit. In hindsight, we probably should have tapped the seal on after we got this spacer in here. But let's check the other side to see if it's fully seated. It looks like it. Sweet. So now we're going to clean up the excess sealant. And we should be good with this part. Now we got the gasket surface all cleaned up. We need to install this Marlin Crawler 23 spline adapter onto the back of the transmission. We're just gonna put a little bit of transmission assembly lube on the splines and might have to tap it in a little bit. Let's see. We bottom out this coupler onto the output shaft on the back of the transmission. The coupler is approximately 3.78 inches in length. Now, if you stick a tape measure into the coupler, once it bottoms out, you should have a measurement of 2.5 inches from the end of the output shaft to the end of the coupler. We're gonna reinstall the bell housing and to seal it up, we're gonna use some FIPG to get it back to factory spec. So Chris put a nice bead of FIPG, the red stuff, to seal the back of this bell housing back to the back of the transmission here. So he's gonna lift it up into place and then we're gonna put some bolts in. All right, so the longer bolts go inside the bell housing. Get these started by hand. So these shorter bottom bolts had some sort of yellowish Loctite on it from Toyota. We're just gonna use some blue Loctite and call it good. All right, now we got the bolts all snug down, hand tight. So we're gonna torque them down. Couldn't really find a torque spec for these specific bolts. Uh, we're gonna go with 45 foot pounds. And if they still feel like they might need a little more tightening, we might go a little further, but we might just sit at 45. So we didn't get the center bolts up to 45 foot pounds. It was feeling a little too tight we didn't quite let that one hit on the torque spec but these bottom ones down here the ones that had the weird yellow factory loctite on them those actually reached the 45 pound torque spec that we set for ourselves and we can also see the FIPG squeezing out make sure there's a good seal and we're gonna call that good start putting these transmission mount bolts back in On this side, can't really get a socket in there, so we have an open end wrench. We also have that ratcheting side. And so Chris is tightening these by hand and he's gonna cinch it up with the wrench. Just getting it tight like a toyga. So we got the stock transfer case here and we need to pull off this factory sleeve that typically mates up with the back of the transmission. This is, as you see here, female and we need it to be male to actually go into its new home which is the back of the marlin crawler transfer case to remove this the right tool for the job would be some type of puller we don't have one one of the methods we saw was welding on little tabs and then the puller had something to grab onto as you can see you don't have much room to get any teeth in here from the jaws of the puller there's not much of a bite so it's really difficult to try to persuade this off. This is basically gonna be garbage to us because we are not going back. There's no going back now at this point, folks. We're committed. 
And so the method we came up with next is we're gonna try to weld something to the end of this and then we're gonna give it a couple wax and hopefully we can get it off with some brute force in place of having the right tool. So we're gonna give this a couple tacks and then we're gonna give it a couple wax. Nice. Came right off. So introducing this additional transfer case into your mix underneath the vehicle. After removing a sleeve from the OEM or stock transfer case, it becomes a male spline and it's going to fit into the back of the transfer case here. This is what's going to be adapted with the Marlin Crawler adapter sleeve, and then it's going to fit into the back of the transmission. Since these bearings are new, we're just gonna give it a little bit of oil right there on the bearings. Just a little bit. Don't need to do too crazy. Just enough to get them going. Got some Loctite on these studs here. This is the location. This is the top of the transfer case. This is the bottom. And these are where the two studs go. So we're gonna lock tight them, double nut them, and get these tight into the transfer case. We're almost ready to mate the Marley Crawler transfer case with the stock transfer case. We are putting down some sealant here, the gray stuff that was included with the Marlin Crawler kit, but you could also use the Toyota Red FIPG. Like always, we cleaned the surface, we prepped it, we used some acetone, and we started to spread this Permatex Ultra Gray that came with the Marlin Crawler kit. We're gonna clean this up a little bit and then we're gonna drop the Marlin Crawler transfer case on top here. All right, here's the mating ritual. We're gonna put the two transfer cases together. We have a little bit of lube on the shift rods. And we've also propped it up here so we can move the shaft freely. We're gonna put it up on the dowels, try to line it up. There it is. There it goes. And it was also nice to have this available to spin as well. So we had it up a little bit on its side. That's about it, that's about all you got. I think we're gonna have to suck the rest in with the bolts here. We installed all the bolts hand tight. We still got a little bit of a gap. We put our lock washer and washer and our nut on our studs. And now we're gonna cinch everything down and suck these two together. All right, so we use a ratchet and an open end wrench to get these stud nuts. And we got them, we didn't get them good and tight. We got them hella tight. There's no torque spec for these that we could find. Obviously it's an aftermarket part that doesn't come with instructions but we got them nice and snug. So now that we got these two transfer cases mated to each other, we're going to remove this original shifter since it's been moved back, it's not gonna fit in the same hole. So we're gonna remove it. We're gonna have to cut some of the sheet metal from the bottom of the truck to fit this, but we don't know where that's gonna be right now. And it's gonna be easier for us to just get it in place, then find out where we need to cut. Then we could put this shifter back on once we got it mocked up. This is what it looks like underneath here. There's the top of your stock transfer case. All right, so we removed the shifter. We got it loaded up on the trans jack. Now we're going to scoot it underneath the truck and get this baby installed. The mating surface on the back of the transmission and the mating surface of the MC31 adapter plate 
should have silicone applied to prevent leaks. The rear cavity between these two pieces will fill with oil during operation. As you can see here, there is a hole designed to pass gear oil through both sides of the adapter plate. All right. That's how it just... That no clears? Yeah. We're gonna put the heart back in here. Jack and Doodle. Jack and Doodle. Jack and Doodle. Removing it. Really got to over to me because it's like it's crooked right now. Yeah. I got, I got the jack with the arm. That's good. Is that good? I think so. Can we tilt it still? All right, we gotta scoot it back over towards you. Okay, hold on, I can't because this rubber thing. All right, now. Yeah, that's good. About there. All right, now go up. All right. Right about there, hold on, hold on. Scoot it forward. That's like in. It's not really lined up over here. So you want to take a closer look? It's not lining up. Really? Yeah, looks pretty darn lined up over here. It's just off. Well, we had to take it back down. Some of the bolt holes didn't line up, and this plate might have not been the correct one. Or if it was the correct one, they didn't put the holes in the right place. What was nice about this whole experience and not having to second guess ourselves was this other transfer case. Chris had purchased the adapters recently, but I'd found this on Craigslist. So the only bolt holes that lined up were these four. These other ones down here on the left side and the bottom, none of them lined up. So here's the new plate we got from Marlin Crawler. They sent it out pretty quick since they're in California. We received it in a day or two. We took off the other plate and sent it back to them. We cleaned up this surface again because we're gonna seal this up with the ultra gray. And this is the same process as last time. I'm just gonna clean up the surface real good, put the gasket maker on there, and then tighten up the bolts. So after we're done with this, we're gonna get back under the rig and try to mount it to the back of the transmission. So we're gonna get the splines mated up, and then we're going to rotate the transfer case or twist it a little bit so all the bolt holes line up. So Chris and I are alternating here he got a bolt thread started and I got a bolt thread started and now we're pulling it closer to the back of the transmission bell housing. The splines in the output shaft make contact and then you have to push it in the rest of the way and then it has a little bit of a gap and we're gonna close that gap by tightening all the bolts down. These are all 12 millimeter bolts. This thing's all cinched up. Can't really get a torque wrench on most of these, so we're just going by that feel. A little torque elbow action by yours truly. Good and tight. So with Chris's 2000 Toyota 4Runner, there was about six connections that he needed to extend the wiring on. So here's the connectors that Chris extended. You can see he wrapped them up nice and tidy with some wire loom. And we have a couple connectors on the side, a couple connectors here on the back. And there's one around this side as well that you can't see. But once you get everything disconnected for your particular application, things will make a lot more sense to you in understanding which connectors you actually need to extend. We measured center to center on the shifters on the transfer cases and we ended up at seven and a quarter. So we lined up the tape on the center line of the front shifter and this seven and a quarter is about where the carpet ends. Now we're gonna put this shifter up just to see where it lands. This divot right there is about center of where the plate will land. Just line it up like that. So now we're gonna wanna drill our hole somewhere around here because the shifter is coming up right here. And hopefully we'll be able to slide this plate in there and bolt it up from above. Okay, so now that we got the shifter all lined up about where we want it to be, uh, we're gonna mark the carpet and cut the carpet away and then drill a hole through the body. This is the boot that we're planning on using 
it was like some Spectre Universal boot. Uh, the link will be in the description. And this is on the top side of the body. This will seal the body and the shifter from the outside elements. We're hoping we can fit the shifter into one of these cup holders and just cut the bottom of the cup holder out. And hopefully we don't have to mangle it too much, but we'll see. So we got the shifter in its resting place. And as you can see, we kind of cut in the wrong area. This first hole that we cut was actually too far up and to the left. So we're gonna try to weld that piece back in. We have some rib nuts here where this boot is going to bolt down into there. So we're gonna weld back some material here and then close this up and then see where it comes through on the actual cup holder plastic. So we started to show you some of the cutting we needed to do for the stock transfer case because it got pushed back. This is where the new lever is gonna live that was originally in this place next to the shifter for the gears and the transmission. The Marlin Crawler shifter is now living where the old transfer case one used to be, but he had an extra boot here that he cut up so it would fill in the space a little bit better. Here's all the area that he needed to cut on the cup holder, so quite a bit to get the shifter to move around freely in its little U-shape that it does. Shift lever that comes with the Marlin Crawler is just very straight. Chris had an extra transfer case and so he had an extra stock shift lever and you can see here the customization that he did to it so that it would fit in the stock location and this is where he's going to shift the Marlin Crawler transfer case but what was nice about that little addition is now everything kind of looks a little more OEM than it would have if we didn't do that and it puts things kind of where they need to be now right now, Chris has the stock shifter knob on this area, but we really want to put this nice shifter lever on there. And because it's threaded, it's not going to work on here. It's, there's no threads. So what Chris did is he got this thread cutter die. And what he's going to do later is cut the threads on the shaft to accommodate the Marlin Crawler shifter knob. So this is kind of the work that we needed to do to make this possible in here in the cabin. This is really gonna be a part that we can't really give you a template for. It's gonna be based on your transfer case, based on your transmission. For example, if you have a manual transmission, all this stuff is gonna be a little bit different per your application. So we just wanna show you a little bit about what we had up here without showing you all the details. And this is the overall setup that we have in here. And we'll also show you what it looks like when everything's put back together as well. Here's the final product in the cabin. We have the stock shifter moved back into the cup holder. The appropriate cuts have been made. The boot's been affixed. And this will shift around and have room to move. And this is in the stock location of the original transfer case. And as you can see, we have a lot of the cup holder cut out here. This is the final product after cutting and test fitting and cutting and test fitting again after moving the shifter through its motions and of course we're also test shifting the marlin crawler shifter and this just goes forward and back so this doesn't have a, a u-shape like the stock transfer case has so this is everything buttoned up in its final resting place we're now ready for the next part of the install which includes custom drive shafts we decided to go with Tom Woods because they are well known in the industry for making really good quality drive shafts. And they also have some cool aspects about their drive shafts that make them one of the best options in the industry. So taking a look at the front shaft here, it's basically a bolt-in replacement and will bolt right to the stock Toyota flanges. However, it does upgrade and update the drive shaft to use Spicer style 1310 series components. And the nice thing about these components is that they are the most common size and style drive shaft components in existence in the United States. So that means if you ever need to replace a U-joint or you have to have some type of repair done, you can pretty much do that anywhere in the United States. So it gives you a lot more options in case you're out and about and you don't have the ability to source specific Toyota parts. Now the rear drive shaft also came with replacement flanges. 
These flanges are going to replace the flange on the transfer case and the flange on the pinion. These flanges bolt pattern is much more readily available and opens up the possibility of running a 1350 series drive shaft, which is typically recommended for people running 35 inch tires or larger. If they have upgraded axles, if you have a dual transfer case, or if you have a higher output engine, like maybe you add a supercharger or maybe you do a complete swap and put a V8 in there, these will hold up to that extra power. So both of these drive shafts were custom made by Tom Woods to our length and specifications. So if you're going to get into this transfer case install, you will need custom drive shafts. Now they include some maintenance and installation instructions here. So if you get drive shafts from Tom Woods, you'll get these as well. And one thing we're gonna focus on in this install is confirming the correct geometry of the drive shaft itself. And because our pinion angle is going to need adjustment, we also got these adjustable rear upper and lower control arms from Opt Off Road. These are definitely a great upgrade for anybody that's going to wheel. They're super beefy, they're super thick. We did do an install on these, so if you click on the link above, you can see that install. What we're gonna focus on primarily with these is fixing the pinion angle. So the U-joints are happy and we have the correct geometry moving forward. So none of our components wear out prematurely. We're not gonna show the install of these control arms, but what we will show is how to adjust these so you can fix your pinion angle in case it needs adjusting. Okay, so the slip joint should be at the axle side. So we're gonna put that through here. Get this all attached. We have to use the OEM hardware on this side. So there's a lock washer and a nut. Just get these sort of snugged up a little bit. We decided to use the stock hardware for both the front and rear flanges. The hardware that Tom Woods provided probably would have worked, but we just decided since the rear flange had to use the OEM hardware, we would just do the same on the front. So now that we got the bolts in hand tight, we're gonna try to get them snugged up a little bit. It might be kind of difficult to get a torque wrench in here, so we're just gonna get them good and tight. So for the front, we had a wrench and a socket to tighten things up. For the rear, because they're studs, so we just need to tighten up the nut. It's a bit easier if you have a second hand to hold back while the other person tightens. Hope you ate your Wheaties this morning. So this flange came with the East Coast Gear Supply built third member that I purchased from them, but it doesn't match up with the bolt pattern on the new drive shaft. So we have to replace it with the one that Tom Wood said. So we're gonna unstake the nut and we got this special Toyota nut unstaking and restaking kit. Yeah, it makes it a lot easier than trying to use like a screwdriver or something like that. Okay, now that the nut is unstaked, we're gonna use a 30 millimeter socket and just hit this with the impact. You're probably gonna have to use a hammer to tap the flange off. I found that a regular metal hammer works better because the dead blow just doesn't seem like it has enough kind of impact, I guess, to take the flange off. Okay, and we're gonna do the same thing on the transfer case flange. You just gotta unstake the nut. Same tool. Now we're gonna remove the nut since we unstaked it. And this flange should just slide right out. So now we're going to get the Tom Woods flanges installed on the transfer case and pinion. 
Before we jump under the rig and show you the installation of the drive shaft and adjusting the control arms, we kind of wanted to show you a general idea of what we're trying to achieve. Basically, right now the pinion angle is going to be off and the U joint connection isn't going to be straight. We want it to be like that, but it's going to be like that. By adjusting the opt off road upper control arms, we'll be able to pull this U joint a little straighter and it'll make the connection a lot happier. This is a pretty essential part in installing your drive shaft. This is how Tom Wood recommends it. You're supposed to have minimal joint angle and at the differential, which is this right here. You're, you're trying to make that as straight as possible. Now we're gonna install the new flange from Tom Woods onto the transfer case. So it should just sort of slip on there. And then we're gonna put this new nut that I got from Toyota onto the output shaft. And we're gonna just zing it on, 30 millimeter socket. Okay, so this is part of the toolkit for staking nuts. Get that on there. And then just hit it with a hammer. I think it's kind of messing me up because it's so far recessed inside. Mm. All right, so we ended up just using a cold chisel and it kind of was able to get in there a little better to restake the nut. The kit is still pretty good for unstaking the nuts though because sometimes it can be really difficult to get a screwdriver in there to unstake the nut. So now we're gonna do the pinion flange that Tom Woods provided and we're just gonna set that on there and then we got a new Toyota nut to go on here just gonna start it by hand finish it with the impact we're just gonna go pretty hard on this third setting and we will get the nut to about the same tightness that it was before. And we have a video on replacing the pinion seal back here. What we did in that video is we used the same nut. We didn't use a new one. We just got it as tight as we could until we couldn't tighten anymore by hand. And we noticed that the nut itself was back in its original location where it originally got staked. So we almost are of the opinion that you kind of get it on as tight as you can there is a particular preload that you need for this, but depending on your situation, you might want to use the existing nut and get it right back where it was staked last. The torque value for the companion flange nut is 145 foot pounds when using a crush sleeve. But Chris has a solid spacer, and with the original shims, it would be around 123 to 151 foot pounds. It's not a specific number, it can be a range. And Chris had a solid spacer installed when he sent his differentials in for a gear install from East Coast Gear Supply. Chris went with 529s and is running 35s. A new bearing preload should be about 16.5 to 22.6 inch pounds, and a used bearing preload should be around 7.8 to 11.3 inch pounds. And to correct bearing preload, you would add or remove shims. So like Chris said, third setting, cranking it on as tight as we can with the impact wrench, and then we're gonna stake it there. Just give it. So now we're gonna get the rear drive shaft installed. There's no nuts. We just gotta thread the bolts into the flange. Those started. Just gonna work on the rear here. This is kind of a lengthy process because you have to use the open end part of the wrench and just go little by little and just keep on adjusting. So we'll be back when we're done. So now that we got the bolts tightened down, this is a good view of the pinion flange versus the angle of the actual drive shaft. And we want to bring that flange so it makes it more perpendicular to the flange itself. What we're going to do is we're going to lengthen the uppers because if we shorten the lowers, we're going to be running into other issues like rubbing and things like that. So we're going to opt for the 
uppers, we're going to start to adjust that. And by lengthening the uppers, it's going to push back on the axle, making this more straight. So first thing we're gonna do to just show you, gonna get our angle gauge, angle finder, zero it out on the flange. And then if we match it up to the drive shaft, we're about seven degrees off of where we want to be. I think Tom Woods says around two or three degrees is acceptable, something along those lines, but we're pretty far off from that. So we're going to start adjusting these upper control arms and hopefully make this angle a little bit better. So the nice thing about the opt off road control arms is to adjust them. You don't have to disconnect it from either end. Most links, you're gonna have to disconnect it because they only have right hand thread, but because Opt Off Road has right hand and left hand threads, you can just loosen up these lock nuts and spin the control arm to the desired length. So first thing you gotta do, loosen up these lock nuts. Okay, so now that those are loose, you just have to twist this and it will start spreading the links apart. We're gonna do the other one a little bit too so that it's a little easier to start adjusting them. These ones are already loose. You see the pinion flange angle going up at all? Yep. So I think we need to get it about three and a half. So there is gonna be a limit to how much you can extend these control arms because these upper link brackets on the axle will start hitting the frame right here. So after I adjust these, I'm actually gonna do a flex test and just make sure that it has enough clearance back there. And I would recommend doing a flex test without your coils, just to make sure that you're not hitting the frame. In general, you just wanna bring your pinion angle as close to factory spec as possible. Checking on a stock 4Runner, we've noticed that the stock pinion angle here is around three degrees. Chris ended up adjusting his upper arms to 12.5 inches, measuring from the center of one bolt to the other, and got the pinion angle back to a spec of about three degrees. He then took out his coils and did some flex testing just to make sure things were not making contact with the frame. And then Chris also did some tests with the rig loaded down in the rear to make sure he didn't have a negative pinion angle. So Chris also made this custom plate for the transfer case isolator mount to mount onto. The stock transfer case mounts to the cross member here, but because we're not putting a secondary cross member right next to the other cross member, he made this plate that kind of extends and allows you to connect the mount for the case here as well. And to get the bends, Chris brought it over to a metal shop close to his house in San Francisco, and they put the appropriate bends into the metal, as you see here. And then when he bolted everything up here, he tacked it in place on the cross member itself. He took the cross member out, did the final weld, and then he bolted it all back in. So it looks really clean. It gives the extended drivetrain a little bit more support. So this is common to do. Some people don't do it at all, but this is a good move. Just give the transfer case a little extra support since it's jutting out a lot more than it was before. And there's going to be more strain on the bolts holding it all together. This plate is going to be something that you just need to make custom and play around a little bit with a cardboard template to get it the way you want. All right, so now it's time to test the Marlin Crawler transfer case and see how low she can go. 
So Chris, why don't you show us how to shift everything in place and show us how low she can go. So first, make sure you're in neutral. Then we'll shift this into too low, dock transfer case, and then shift the Marlin crawler into low gear. All Should right, be. let's see how she goes. All right, so we're all done with this Mollen Crawler transfer case install. It included some really nice Tom Woods custom drive shafts, some adjustable links from Opt Off Road, and of course the associated parts from Marlin Crawler. And as you saw, this was kind of involved. I don't think this is a beginner mod. This is kind of an advanced mod. Now since the filming of this, Chris has added an Imkeep bumper and also relocated his gas tank with the F-150 tank relocation that Imkeep also makes. Now for those of you that want to learn more about the benefits of adding a dual transfer case to your rig, head on over to marlincrawler.com and there's a nice breakdown that shows you the benefits between an automatic transmission, a manual transmission, and all things that fall into place with those particular types of vehicles. If you're interested in getting custom drive shafts, definitely check out Tom Woods. They make some amazing stuff. They're really well known in the off-road industry. So whether you're doing some custom work like we did, where we have to get custom drive shaft lengths, or whether you just want to chase down some driveline vibrations, Tom Woods is definitely a place we'd recommend. As far as the adjustable lower and upper rear control arms, Opt Off Road makes some really beefy, solid products. So if you want to get a discount on some parts for your rig, head on over to optoffroad.com and use the promo code SICKMODS to save yourself some dough. So as you saw, this thing crawls pretty slow. We can't wait to get it out on the trails and see what this thing can do for us with the added engine torque and just the overall controllability going uphill and downhill. So Chris, what's your overall impressions of this job and what made this successful? Well, I'm pretty happy with how it all turned out. It took a little while getting it all back together, but I'm really impressed with the quality of the drive shafts. And I really like the adjustable control arms. Those helped get everything where they needed to be. And I want to thank Tom Woods and Opt Off Road for getting me these drive shafts and these control arms and making this project successful. With all that said, we hope you learned something in this two-part series. Thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing. If you have any questions or comments, definitely do that below. And so we'll see you next time for some more sick mods.